So, for example, in triple negative breast cancer, you know, in metastatic uh, setting, like in the earlier session, even uh, with PDL1, for example, CPS uh, 10 or above, we know that they can respond to pembrolizumab immunotherapy. So that's kind of a predictor of response, uh, although it's not perfect. Uh, but that's uh, you know what we have uh, for that, and uh, for new, but the marker is not predictive uh, of you know, the immunotherapy benefit in the neoadjuvant setting. So that's still something that, uh, you know, the research is ongoing. Uh, because of the Keynote 5 to 2 study, uh, because of the approval of pembrolizumab in combination with chemotherapy in the neoadjuvant setting for high-risk ER-negative ER triple negative disease, uh, you know, patients are getting a lot of treatments. Uh, so I think you know there is significant interest to identify who we should be able, you know should be able to avoid uh, more extensive chemotherapy, uh, who should be the candidate for immunotherapy. For ER positive cancers, I think uh, you know we need to figure out uh, what are the population who may be resistant to CDK46 in inhibitor even at the front, up front, so that they can be offered. Uh, additional, you know, other treatment rather than CDK46 inhibitors. You know, potentially, like the earlier, uh, you know, discussion about molecular subtypes. You know, would there be a subset of patients that, although they are ER positive, potentially they could benefit from, for example, immunotherapy type of approach, like basal-like or triple-negative breast cancer.